everyone. Uh, this is James, and welcome back to another Shimwrecker video. Um, notice I didn't say Shimwrecker review because this one's going to be a little bit different. I'm out here practicing at Triad Lanes in Greensboro this morning and just brought my camera with me and wanted to kind of give you guys an active, hands on demonstration of the travel bag that I've got right now and kind of explain a little bit more of why I have each ball, what I use it for, and kind of visually illustrate on a, uh, on a medium length, medium high volume challenge pattern. Uh, it's a good representation that'll be able to illustrate these differences ball to ball and just kind of show you how they all stack up together. So uh, anyways, here we are and let's get right into it. Uh, ball number one is my trusty phase two. Um, this is the ball that I drilled right about a month ago or so. Um, you should be able to see it right there. And it's on my middle finger on this ball, so it's a 4 and 3 quarter uh, pin to axis. Um, basically, this is my this is my strong, early smooth, really round ball. Uh, really good on volume. Uh, not necessarily good when there's a ton of friction down lane. So I'll just kind of throw a few shots here, see if we can get lined up, kind of show you what this ball is about. It's close. Yep, there you go. So nice, uh, nice early read. Smooth down lane, but still goes through the pins really well. Uh, something especially because I ball so much on house shot. Going for equipment that is early and smooth, but prioritizes control over pin carry isn't necessarily the best idea uh, because that means I'm getting nine too much and I'm not going to not going to succeed that way. Um, obviously, it's a little different on sport patterns, but uh, and tougher stuff. But for the most part, this is what served me really well. So. Off of that, uh, I'm gonna jump probably five or six left and uh, give us another go and see what happens. It's got a chance. Yep, there you go. So you can see, even with that move there, I pretty much threw it the same. And it still came off the spot, but it was definitely a little smoother, didn't really continue through the pins quite as well. So that's telling me already that if I'm getting into that part of the lane with this ball, that I would need to either get around it a little more or maybe even get a little further left and soften up my speed a little bit, just to kind of give it a chance to make the corner. So I'm going to do a little bit of all of those on this shot, and hopefully I don't stuff a nine pin on this or something. Let's do another two left and a little bit around it. And that's a strike. There you go. So you see that one still went through it really well, but it's still really, really controlled, really workable. Um, that's what I really love about this ball. I've drilled 10 or 11 of these are the past four years. So it's, it's definitely a serious staple of my bag and one that seems to work on almost anything. Um, yeah, that's, that's the phase two. Um, next up, uh, this is the Axiom Pro that I've had pretty much since release day. Um, this is drilled at four and a half by four and a half by two. Uh, puts the pin well above my bridge, probably by, by about an inch and a half or so. Um, I tend to like this ball a little better with this higher torque layout, um, simply because the ball itself is pretty smooth and not too terribly dynamic down lane. So this first shot is gonna be where I started with my phase two. Um, should see it get down the lane a little further, but also be a little more tumbly off the spot is kind of what I'm expecting here. So we'll see where this goes. Oh, I missed. Help. Yep. That was not the best shot, but you can see even with that is, it's definitely not hooking as early as the phase two, um, but it's also not, it's also a little more tumbly and forward down lanes. I actually don't carry a shiny asymmetric a lot of the time anymore, um, simply because they're a little too volatile down lane, and I'd rather, again, I'm kind of trending a little more towards predictable, but still punchy stuff. Um, so this is kind of my stand-in, so to speak, for that shiny asymmetric uh, type of reaction on all this. Is because this doesn't see the fronts quite as much as something like a Phase 2 or the IQ Tour Solid that I'll show in a second. But it's also a little more forward off the crick, which you definitely saw in that shot right there. Um, where it could have come back and just kind of decided to stop it. So I'm going to stand in the same spot as where I did right there. This is actually two left of where I started with the Phase 2. And let's throw a better shot and see if this works a little better. Eh, tugged it. And I got four. Oops. 
so again, this is not... The Axiom Pearl has been a little bit of an oddity for me. Um, it's not necessarily one that works all the time, but when it does, it looks really, really good. And when it doesn't, like that shot there, which has me thinking I'm probably just in the wrong part of the lane. Um, yeah, it doesn't work too well. So what I'm gonna do is use this like I would a shiny isometric now, is this is the ball where I kind of want to parallel left a pretty good amount off of like a phase two, essentially put it in the middle of the lane and let the ball do the work itself down lane. So this is what, seven or eight left off of that last shot. And I'm just gonna kind of put it through the middle of the lane and let the ball pick up the ball. And I missed right against one. Yep. A couple of not great shots, but even so, you can still definitely see that it's shaping very, very differently than the phase two down lane. So this is kind of, again, it's not one that I'm going to use all the time, but it's a very nice kind of offset shape to have in my bag. So let's see if I can at least strike once with this and then uh, hopefully not make myself look like a complete schmuck and we can move on from there. So same spot, just for a better ball.com. There we go. I'll strike. Or 10-10. Ten, ten. Ten it. But again, you can see that just like any other um, shiny isometric piece, this is one that won't necessarily be an option on everything. Um, in this case, I don't tend to throw shiny asymm or this type of shape in general in this building very much. And from these few shots, you can see why it just kind of ends up in this weird kind of over-under type of spot that doesn't really get the job done all that well for me, honestly. So, anywho, um, that is the Axiom Pearl. Uh, moving on from that, uh, we're going to my IQ Tour Solid. Um, this one has lane shine on top of 3000 grit, it looks like right now. Um, balls lit up in above my bridge, not quite as tall as the Axiom Pearl. So this is another, this is kind of, when I like the smoothness and control of the phase two, but I want something that won't read the friction quite as much, then I go to this ball. So obviously, a little less cover and a lot less core. Um, this is the one, it's kind of the one in offset shape, another offset ball, but on the round side. So it's gonna control the friction a lot better, lets me keep my angles in front of me a little bit more. Good shot. Oh wow, that hooked. So you can see right there that even though it is still very smooth, it's not reading as early as phase two, but it's also saving a little bit more for down lane. Uh, which I did not expect it to hook quite that much, but I guess there is a little more volume in this pattern than I was initially expecting, so that's why it's hooking so much down lane. So off of that, probably gonna go three or four left. Just kind of throw it, throw it about the same as I just did and see if this works. But again, I'm not going nearly as far left as I did with the phase two because this ball does not handle direction change as well as the lower differential. And that's got a chance. There you go. So you can see even with that, it's still back ending quite a bit, even though it is still is pretty smooth. Um, got a little more space to move left with this than I expected, honestly. And I think part of that might be due to the little bit of lane shine that I've got on it. But again, even with that, it's still it's still very smooth, very controllable. That's a, you know kind of a lot of those same traits as the phase two, just not light as early. So I'm gonna go another another two and keep my hand up the back of the ball. No two left, and let's see what we got here. Yep, and there you go. So you can see it's still rolling a little more, but it's definitely still on the smoother side and also kind of not doing the same things as the phase two. Uh, the lanes are pretty high friction here, uh, just in terms of the base surface friction at Triad. So even though this is a pretty high volume pattern, that's why you can see this the IQ is still definitely reading the pattern pretty well is because it's not, there's enough friction underneath the volume that it can still, it's still able to pick up and do its thing down lane properly. Um, so next is my trim. Um, this has the same layout as my phase two, a pin in my middle finger. Um, this is one that I've been throwing a ton recently. Uh, it's really, it's honestly one of the workhorses. It's, it's gone from, okay, this ball is pretty good, but I'm 
not really sure when to use it to uh now this is when i'm getting warmed up is one of the first balls on the pack because it's so predictable and r2s pearl in the same core as the pro motion the piston core so it's a little a little cleaner but definitely more responsive off of friction than my iq tour solid and also the core is pretty similar to the phase two and the axiom but again r2s pearl versus the tx16 on the phase two and the uh nex pearl on the axiom pearl so let's uh give this a go i start about the same zone and let's see what we got here Got a chance. So you can see right there, right away, that it's definitely getting further down the lane before it makes this move than any of the stuff I've thrown before. And again, that's because a lot of that just comes down to the cover stock. Is you know, cover and surface is a vast majority of ball reaction, and then layout and surface is a uh, kind of a tweak or layout and core is a tweak on top of that base reaction. So that's why you see. I've got three bigger core symmetrical pieces with the phase two, the axiom pearl, and the trim. You can see they're all reading the lane a little bit differently because of the cover and surface differences more than anything else. So let's uh, yeah, stay in about the same spot. We'll go one and one left, keep it a little closer to the pocket. Let's see if we can get a better shot here. It's close. Stop. Yeah, I grabbed that. But again, you can still see that it's definitely projecting down the lane a lot more than my uh, than my other equipment, uh, especially versus the Phase 2 and the Axiom Pearl. So this is one that I use a ton, either as the lanes transition, as a ball down from my Phase 2 and my Axiom Pearl. Um, alternatively, if I need something that will corner a little better than my IQ Solid without going up to a stronger formula like the Phase 2, and that's where this comes out quite a bit as well. So, jump a few more left here. See if I can get one through the pins a little bit better. That's close. And there you go. So again, it's, it's more about... Uh, the way I've got my arsenal set up is more about using the cover stock to control the first... Using the ball to control the first 30 to 40 feet of the lane. And then I have the latitude to use physical tricks to manipulate the last 20 to 25 feet. And so essentially the theory there is I have some very simple shapes in my bag that all kind of make sense together. And so then it's a matter of just making sure I have the right ball in my hand to keep myself close. And then from there, um, I've got the tricks to actually get the ball through the pins the right way on whatever situation I'm facing. So it's essentially a get it close and then the rest of it is the rest of the solution is me and not the equipment um last ball that i'm going to show out of my main arsenal is my pin up muscle pink uh, this is the same layout as my iq tour solid uh it's four and a half by four and a half by two and a quarter so a pin right above the bridge uh, nothing crazy here it's just this is a baby iq tour solid that also kind of looks a little more down lane um it's kind of in between an IQ solid and probably like a high road pearl, I would say, if that makes sense almost. It's like, it gets down the lane pretty well, but not insanely so. It booms down lane, but not quite as much as a high road pearl. Um, really, really good on friction. Uh, I've drilled a few of these, or several of these over the past few years, and this is probably my favorite one that I've had so far. So let's give this a go, and you will see what I'm talking about right away. So you can see right there that it's still, it's even getting down the lane further than my trend, but it's still able to kind of roll back through the pins, but without being too aggressive down lane. And so when it, especially, this is not one that I throw a ton on the fresh, but as the lanes transition, like I hit this in a, in a tournament block this past weekend, where the lanes got pretty crispy and I just needed the ball to straight up ignore the first 30, 40 feet of the lane altogether but still have it roll down lane and control the down lane friction. And this ball is incredible for that. So to illustrate this, I'm gonna go, eh, probably another six or seven left, and try and throw it to about that same spot. And you'll see just how straight this can go through the fronts while still being fairly controllable down lane at the same time. And I missed. And it's okay now. 
But again, that's a good illustration of why I like this ball so much. Is it's one of those balls that seems to be able to really cover up for a lot of my mistakes. Uh, and it's still, like, it's really predictable, really workable. Uh, that's kind of a trend that you're seeing, well, a trend, no pun intended, with most of what I've been showing you here, is there's these different shapes that I've got, but they all are just kind of, they all have a similar characteristics of being very controllable, very predictable, very workable. Uh, that's something I really, really like to see with a lot of my equipment. So that's the main travel bag right there. Um, phase two, Axiom Pearl, IQ Tour Solid, Trend, Hustle Link, and then of course, I don't think I really need to show you all this, but I carry a, uh, a mix around with me because I am just so much better shooting spares with plastic, or in this case, pearlized urethane that goes pretty much like plastic. So then I'll have a few other balls that I'll add in as well, just for kind of fringe situations. And these will kind of rotate in and out depending on exactly what I'm bowling on. Uh, the first of these is the ball I'm about to show you. This is an RST X1 from Rotor Grip. Uh, it's a sanded hybrid asymmetric layout. It is four and a half by four and a half by four, which puts the pin below my bridge. Uh, this is the same ball that was in my uh, re review video for the RST a couple months ago. This is this is one that I don't need a ton. Um, I wish I needed it more, but I don't. Um, this is when when the phase two is close, but I just it's not able to get around the corner well enough. I need a little bit of extra motor essentially to be able to make that corner. So I'll be able to hook this actually a little more than my phase two, but it'll still hook, still read the lane pretty early. So you know I'm starting pretty far left right here and let's see what this gives us. And not a great shot. And stuff in my mouth. Uh, so you can see even there, I missed into the oil and it still kind of sat there a little, like it read early enough to be able to blend that out and not jump on me. Uh, but it is, you can still see even being in the oil the entire way down the lane, it still picked up, it still drove through the pins. And that's a good illustration of kind of what it, this ball does for me is this is the one to dig through oil and still create some motion even when nothing else will. Uh, obviously with my rev rates and how I play the lanes, I don't need this ball very much, but when I do, it is an absolute monster and I absolutely love it. Missed a little right, but it came back. But you can still see it's recovering very well, but it's definitely rolling a little bit more than my face too did while still hooking as early. So this is essentially, you can almost say it's a direct ball up from my Axiom Pearl to a certain extent, where it's got that same like heavy rolling motion down lane, but an earlier read than the Axiom Pearl. So that's one ball. Um, another one is one that I absolutely love throwing, but I just don't need it a whole lot. Um, this is a code black at four and a half, at four and three quarters by four and a half by three and a half. So this is the same pin and middle finger layout as my phase two and my trend. Uh, so this is the same cover as the trend as well with R2S Pearl. It's just a little more uh, core. This is the Rad 4 core, which is a uh, high intermediate dip asymmetric core. I'm expecting this to get down the lane, uh, definitely better than the Axiom Pearl, but also to uh, just look like someone's kicking it left at about 50 feet. So let's see what we got here. Oh boy. Not my best. You can see even there, kept it in the oil a little bit, kind of similar to what I did with my first shot with RST. But once I got to the spot and actually started hooking off of that friction, it obviously hooked a lot and so this is kind of if I need something to create a lot of down lane boom which again is not something I need very much anymore and this is the one for that um, I will say as well my uh, my Rubicon UC2 gets here on Wednesday I have a feeling it's going to be kind of in the same part of my bag as what this code black does um, where it clears the fronts really well but it provides a lot of down lane motion so let's see if I can just throw a better shot right here and show you what this ball's about. Oh, hey, I threw it better. So you can see right there, it's definitely firmer off the break point and more angular through the pins than anything else. But it's almost, almost too much motion, if that makes sense. So it's kind of, again, it's one of those balls where I love throwing it and I just don't need to throw it all that often. Uh, the last ball I'm going to show is probably not what you think it will be. Um, this is my pitch black that I'm about to throw. Uh, it's drilled 5x4x3 with the pin of both my uh, middle finger. 
so nothing crazy layout wise um, it's got a thousand grit with a little bit of lane shine on it this is one that I'll bring if I'm coming in totally blind to a center and I don't really know what I'm getting into this is one that'll be kind of a bailout option more than anything else but again it's house shot I'm not the greatest with urethane and it's one where unless I really 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 need it I'm probably not going to be throwing it just because they've got better options that I'm more comfortable with pretty good shot so you can see right there it's a totally different look a totally different feel than resin um, you know, I was easily seven or eight boards right with my feet of anything that I've thrown reactive wise on this pattern um, very smooth off the end of the pattern very controllable obviously but again remember what I was saying earlier is a lot of times I don't want to be sacrificing too much pin carry for extra control and that's what urethane ends up doing for me a lot of the time and why I don't throw it very often is it ends up making that sacrifice for me of actually you know giving me the control but not the pin carry to go with it and i tugged that one and that is the benefit of urethane right there is when they're tough you can tug it and as long as you got a little bit of hold inside of you it's just going to lay there um, so again this struck twice so that's kind of cool but at the same time it's still not something i'm going to use a whole lot so then, now that we have this context, um, I'm going to go back, throw one more shot with my face, too, just kind of go back to the top of the bag. So even though the pitch black on the face, too, the two of the earliest balls in my bag, yeah, I'm going to be, probably what, 14 boards, 13 boards different with my feet, I think, and almost two arrows different um, in terms of targeting, so this should strike right here. Pretty good. Yep, there you go. So anyways, that is a kind of a walkthrough of what I actually carry around with me for tournaments. Um, the biggest thing that's been helpful to me personally, and I hope this is helpful for you guys, is being able to kind of visualize how stuff stacks together. And when I go out and practice sometimes, I'll sometimes just bring all of my gear and switch back and forth from ball to ball, kind of semi-randomly, just to get a better feel for how they stack together and how they interact together and that'll kind of help you train your eyes to see your own ball motion as well as what your moves are from ball to ball and when, if you kind of have that inherent feel and knowledge then that makes managing transition in a tournament setting a whole lot easier so anyways i know this is a pretty long and drawn out video um a lot of talking kind of off the top of my head to a certain extent but i hope this has also been very very helpful for you guys um, as always, don't forget, don't hesitate to hit me up in the comments if you have any uh, questions about any of the stuff that I'm carrying around right now. And uh, yeah, I've got, got my Rubicon and GC2 arriving later this week. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to getting out and filming for that. As well as the uh, High Road Max and Insight from Storm that are releasing in February. Uh, I got to order those this week. I'm looking forward to getting videos out for those as well. So anyways, uh, definitely let me know if you have any questions and I will see you all out on the lanes. Uh, good luck and good bowling.